readings today. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, pages 1694, or page 884 in the Pew Bibles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily. They rose, the the numbers daily, those who rose were being saved. Our second one is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, page 1121 or page 587. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding. <laughs> Sorry. This was the first we gave baby for graduation. <laughs> so it's a little bit hard. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And our third is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, pages 17 and or page 937. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Shelley. I guess it's a day to get emotional, isn't it? That's okay. That's okay. Uh, well, it was good to be away for a bit on vacation, but it's good to come home. Um, and I'm just thinking, I don't know how many people are here today, but I saw that attendance last week was 74, so we must need to have a barbecue every week. <laughs> just saying. Okay. Who was here for the barbecue? Is it good? Yeah? Yeah? Good. good. Well, anyway, it's good to, to be here with you. And in case you think the pastors go away and just kind of don't go to church, I actually listened to two messages online last Sunday, went to church in the morning at Sandstone Congregational Church, many of you have met Pastor Justin, and then my husband said, why don't we go to this other church for the evening? So we went there, so I had four messages last week, so I, I must have needed that or something. Well, today we are starting a series of messages that I've titled, Be the Church. These are going to take us through several weeks. And the Acts passage that Shelley read for us is really the foundational passage for this entire series. And all of the messages will start with the word be. And so today's message is to be renewed. We've been talking uh, about a journey of renewal that we are going to undertake as a church. And I thought about that word journey. You know, that word journey is the stuff that great books and movies are made of. Journey to the center of the earth, which has been remade I don't know how many times. Um, And all the great action movies are there's some journey that's happening. Uh, They don't necessarily know where they're going to end up, but they make this journey because they're convinced that it's going to be worth it. And we as a church are looking at a journey of renewal, to be renewed, to be the church, because I hope you will understand, if you don't already, that the church is not this building or this place. The church is people. We are the church. And so I want to talk a little bit today about renewal. What is renewal? 
You know, my birthday was about a week and a half ago, and so my license tabs had to be renewed. And about the end of August, I'm like, gosh, I haven't gotten that in the mail. Come to find out that last year the address didn't get changed appropriately, so if I hadn't for some reason remembered about it and gotten online and done that, I would have been driving with expired tags. That's kind of the thing we think of with renewal, is our license tags or a magazine subscription or our driver's license, something that we just go and do something and it's renewed. And definitions say, you know, it's replacing or repairing something that's worn out or expired. Um, Reestablishing a relationship is called renewal. So I thought about when people renew their wedding vows. Reestablishing and dedicating a relationship. Or renewal is resuming an activity after an interruption. We think of it pretty much in once and done type things. But what about spiritual <coughs> renewal? Spiritual renewal is a little harder to wrap our, our heads around and our hands around. It's not a tangible, physical thing. Because spiritual renewal as a church is about something much more, much deeper. It's about our relationship with our Creator God. Throughout Scripture, when the nation of Israel, and then in the New Testament churches, were called to renewal, it was about returning to the heart of God. About restoring and renewing their relationship with Him as their Lord. And renewal, unlike renewing my license tab, renewal for God's people is a constant necessity. It's not a once and done thing. It's an ongoing, continual process. And whenever you read in Scripture, be this, be renewed, be filled, that be means do it and keep doing it. It doesn't mean do it in this moment. It means you keep doing this. It becomes a lifestyle. And Colossians 3.10 says we put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. And for the sake of the kingdom, there's this quote that says, to be church is always to be turning to God, always to be in transition to a better mind, always to be answering afresh the call of God in Christ as events and circumstances make that call concrete. And when God's people cease to be always turning to him, always seeking to be renewed, the body known as the church experiences stagnation and decline. When God's people cease to be answering a fresh his call all the time, the body known as the church gets stuck. There are thousands of churches across our country that are in that place today. And I believe that includes First Congregational Church of Portland. Numbers are declining. You've seen it. People are gone. Kind of going along, plateaued, but not going up. An unknown quote says that we must always change, always renew, and always rejuvenate ourselves. Otherwise, we harden. I think about a potter making clay that as long as they're moving it and working it, it stays soft and pliable, but once they stop manipulating it, it hardens, and you can't change it. And spiritually, that happens to us if we are not seeking renewal. Along with renewal, a word that comes to mind is transformation. And in an article that Michael Chittum, the executive director of the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches, and say that a lot, that is a mouthful. That's why we call it NACCC. Uh, Michael Chittum shared an article on Facebook a few weeks ago that described the need for renewal in churches in terms of churches being ill and transformation and renewal being the cure. In Romans 12, 2, Paul says, don't conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A spiritual problem, as you see on the screen, a spiritual problem requires a spiritual solution. And so we as a church are beginning a journey of renewal. 
which is a way of life in Christ. A journey of turning to God and answering afresh his call. And that verse, 2 Corinthians 4.16, which, which Shelley read, says that we can seem overwhelmed, we can feel overwhelmed by what we see happening in our midst and in our church and in our community. But Paul says, we do not lose heart, though outwardly it may feel like we're wasting away inwardly. We're being renewed day by day. So we're seeking to address our spiritual situation here in Portland in a spiritual way. And so as I started talking about seeking renewal, you may be wondering what to expect. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. You see, renewal for God's people is a journey. It's not a one-time event or an action like me renewing my driver's license or my license caps. It's not a destination we're going to arrive at and we can say, oh, we're done. It's not a list of to-dos that we're going to be given, and if we check off all these ten things and do them, we'll be renewed. It is a way of living in a fluid, evolving relationship with our Lord and Creator. And so the first thing for you to expect in this journey is that renewal is a journey that is participatory. Renewal is not passive. It is an active journey. It requires participation. Renewal does not come by us sitting back or kneeling in front of the church and saying, oh God, renew us. Bring it on. I'm going to sit here while you dump it on me. It doesn't happen that way. Renewal does not come by expecting the pastor or the officer's council or the boards to come up with the right things to fix things. Renewal will involve everyone here in different ways, at different times over the course of this journey. Gathering together in small groups, in large groups, studying God's word, praying together, talking with each other, discerning what God is saying to us, and planning and acting on those things. In 2 Timothy 1.6, Peter was writing to a young pastor, and he said to Timothy, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. I know we have a lot of campers here who make a campfire, and if it starts to, to uh, go out, you know, you have an opportunity to fan that ember into flame to get it started again before it dies. <coughs> And Paul was saying to Timothy, don't let the gift of God in you die. Fan it into flame. Journeying into renewal is living actively in God's gifting in each one of our lives and as we come together. It's participatory. And I've seen this, this statement come across my Facebook feed more times than I would like to see it. It says, don't ask God to guide your footsteps if you're not willing to move your feet. Following our Lord is participatory. This renewal is a journey that is participatory. It's also a journey that is missional. Renewal isn't achieved by completing surveys or having focus groups where we talk about stuff and come up with the list of 10 things to do. 10 steps and you're done. Renewal comes by gathering together, all of us, to discern God's calling learning and taking into account the current culture in which we live, and discovering together who we are as a community formed by God's Holy Spirit in this place and in this time. Renewal requires us all to be learners, to learn or to relearn what it means to be God's people, what it means to be the church in this place and in this time. And so this journey of renewal is designed to help us think and perceive and behave as a missional church, meaning we are a church on God's mission. Renewal is also a journey that is strategic because decisions that set the direction come from a missional perspective, 
from our listening to the Holy Spirit together. Now, again, we need to understand strategy not in the sense we're commonly used to. It needs to be understood in the spiritual sense. Strategy under the direction of God to complete his mission. And we're going to talk more about uh, being on mission next week. But prayer, Bible study, and congregational conversation are primary practices that are strategic in this journey of renewal. Conversations of every person here. Small groups, large groups, one-on-one, -on -one, together, studying, praying. Here's a quote that has been used to describe what this journey is not and what it is. The journey is not simply a new way to keep doing what is presently going on in your church. It does not offer merely a tune-up or adaptations to existing programs and priorities. Rather, in a very constructive and faith-filled manner, it enables the congregation to evaluate and define anew the nature, purpose, and practices of its life together in light of God's mission. Which means that while Sagatok and Mayflower are also during a journey of renewal, it's not going to look the same as ours, because they're not in Portland. This journey offers the opportunity to make the changes discerned to be necessary to become more faithful to God's calling and purpose in our setting and our situation. And then finally, renewal is a journey that is engaging, exciting, and enriching. I mean, how many of you plan a trip and it's fun, you're looking forward to it, you gain something from it? You like going on trips? Some of you do. One person told me they don't like traveling. But, you know, maybe you go on a trip around your yard. Or <laughs> but renewal is a journey of spiritual life and death. A journey to experience Christian community in new ways that we have never experienced it before. And others who have undertaken this type of journey that we are going on have said this. We are learning what it means to be the church and to live missionally. There is new excitement and shared focus. You see, renewal is a journey that we are all on together. But perhaps the most important aspect is that renewal is a work of the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah 40, 31, which was read for you, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might, not by power, but by my Holy Spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. And Psalm 27, 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the Lord our God. This is a journey that is directed, enabled, and empowered by God through the indwelling presence of His Holy Spirit in us, His people. You know, when the Israelites wandered in the desert, they would camp in one place until the cloud of God's presence lifted from the tabernacle, and then they would break camp and follow it. They could see it right there. We kind of wish we had that, didn't we? The cloud that would show us where to go. But we have the Holy Spirit. And renewal is about your relationship with God, about our church's relationship of, with God, about us gaining increased sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, individually and corporately. Renewal springs from learning to listen to the Holy Spirit's voice, knowing His heart and obeying His direction as a body. And we sang about the Holy Spirit before the scripture, and we'll be singing about it again at the end. And so as we talk about this journey of renewal, that we don't know where we're going, and we don't know where it's going to end, it may seem overwhelming. You may be saying, oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know that I want it. I, I, I've, done, I've got enough stuff going on in my life. Do I need more? This is not possible. But I want to ask you a very, very important question that I know someone out there has an answer to. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You know, we don't do it alone. This is a journey that we are meant to go on together. And we don't go on it together alone, but with God as our guide. Christ is the head of the church. And we don't go to church, we are the church. This journey is recapturing what that means. 
And so over the next several weeks, we're going to look to God's word in the book of Acts and learn from the early church what it means to be God's people, to be the church. And my question for you this morning is, will you participate in this journey of renewal? It's a journey that's expected to extend over most of the next year and to spark for us a way of living in the power and presence of God as his called people that will continue far beyond our time here in this church in this place. It's a journey that we take by faith. And it's a journey of biblical proportions. In Tolkien's The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins is presented with an opportunity to go on an adventure, on a journey, and initially he refuses. Because he's comfortable in his garden with his books and his armchair. And he doesn't want anything to change. Yet when he wakes up in the morning and he sees the contract waiting there for his signature, he doesn't say it, but he's thinking, what if? What if I don't go? What will I miss if I don't go? And he chooses to sign the contract, and all of a sudden they're springing a step. You see him running, I don't have time to stop, I'm going on an adventure. He didn't know what he was getting into. Now, I don't think many people have compared Bilbo Baggins with Abraham of Scripture. But you know what? Abraham was very much like Bilbo. God said, Abraham, take your family and go somewhere that I'm going to tell you later where to go. I'm not going to tell you now. I can imagine Abraham being like, um, i got stuff to do here. Can't you, tell, can, can you give me the outline of where I'm going? No, Abraham went. Abraham, in his mind, probably said, what if I don't go? What will I be missing if I don't follow God? Not, not everyone in his family went with him, but his wife, his nephew, his servants, they all did. And God said, through you, nations will be blessed. Next year, 2020, marks the 400th anniversary of congregational forefathers of pilgrims landing at Plymouth Rock. The landing of the Mayflower. Did you know that they didn't plan to land at Plymouth? And I wonder, when they were getting ready to come, did they say, oh, this, this is really scary. I don't know what this journey is going to mean, but I really want to grow in my relationship with God and worship God fully. What if I don't get on the Mayflower, don't go, what will I miss? Renewal is an adventure. And it's exciting and scary all at the same time. Sometimes it will be easy, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it will be comfortable, sometimes it won't. It will require commitment and sacrifice that maybe we've never had to make before. But will it be worth it? Definitely. Because it's a journey into the heart and the call of God. And there is no safer or more satisfying place for us to be than in the heart of God. And so I want to ask you again this morning, will you participate in this journey of the world? When you came in this morning, hopefully you were given an orange card. Everybody have their card? If you don't have a card, raise your hand and I've got cards to give you. Everybody needs a card. Can you pass that down to the seat? You need one to keep the seat with the card. Anybody else? A couple back here. <coughs> so on this card, it talks about your decision. Anybody else? Yeah, got lots of cards still. to walk away with 
without responding to it. Now you'll see on that card it says, yes, I will join in the journey of renewal as the Holy Spirit enables. And someone said to me, so if I mark that, does that mean you're signing me up for something? No. What it means is that you're saying, I want our church to move to the heart of God. And as the Holy Spirit enables me, I will do my part to be the person God wants me to be, to move this church to be the church God wants it to be. Maybe you're unsure. The second one, I'm unsure and I'm seeking the Spirit's guidance. I think of that father that um, brought his son to Jesus and said, Father, uh, God, I believe, help my unbelief. Maybe you're in a place where you're like, I'm just not sure that this will really change anything, but I'm, I'm going to be prayerful about it, Pastor. You know, there's a third place there. I, I, can't, I don't want to do this, Pastor. Maybe you're burned out. Maybe you're just not in a place of hope right now. All three of these responses are valid responses. And this is for those of you who call this your church home. If you're visiting with us today, I want you to know um, what this church is choosing to do over the next several months. And your decision today isn't a decision to say, Pastor, I I'll do this for you. It's Jesus, you want me. You have a plan for our church in this place, and I don't know what it is, but by faith, like Abraham, like our pilgrim forefathers, like so many of them, I'm going to step into this journey and I'm going to walk in. In faith and in hope of what you're going to do in the life of my church, your people. So I'm going to ask you to do something that maybe you've never done before at this church. I'm going to ask you to fill out this card. Take a pen right now and fill out this card. And as we sing the last song, breathe on me, breath of God. The breath of God is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you to bring this card forward. This is mine. I signed it. To bring this card up and offer it to Jesus. He knows your heart. We're a community, a family that walks together. We're all in different places. But I truly believe that God wants to do an awesome thing in this church as we have faith and step out on the first step of that unknown journey. A journey that will change our lives and change our communities in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to sing number 227, I believe it is. Breathe on your breath of God. I'm going to stand down here and sing with you. And I'm going to ask that you bring your card up and that you offer it to the Lord Jesus. And then when we're done, I'm going to offer a benediction for this series from the front on all of you, on all of us. Yeah, I didn't know how all of you were going to respond to that, but seeing all of you come up, I believe God has great things in store for us as we follow his art and his mission. This is a new congregational benediction for this series that I found in our congregational hymnal. Depart now. And as you go, remember, we haven't just been to church. We are the church. And when the church is the church, it is nothing more. It is nothing less. It is nothing other than the presence of Christ through people. So go into the world and be the church through the transforming love of the risen Christ. Amen.